Welcome, welcome everybody. Greg Peterson coming to you from the Urban Farm and I'm here with... Janice from the Urban Farm, residing at Two Piece in the Pod Orchard. Nice. Oh, you're, it's Two Piece in a Pod Orchard now, not Urban Farm, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, when cool. we were doing that class on the collaborative farming, I realized I'm not doing any of the vegetable growing. Yeah. So I'm primarily an orchard. No, good. That's awesome. So I just want to call out, check out the shirt I have on tonight. <laughs> Urban Farm Fruit Tree Program with a little bit of see-through action happening. Oh, yeah, because of the background. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, hey, at least you only have a little tiny piece. If I would have gone background, I would have gone full. Oh, yeah, exactly. Weirdo. Oh yeah. yeah, so the green screens, Janice has a green shirt on. If she'd have put her green screen up, she'd have been just a floating head. I had that happen the other day. It was so funny. So a little Max Headroom action for those who know uh, about him. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, that's from a long time ago. So these <laughs> shirts, these shirts are the th are thanks to uh, Tanks down in Tucson. They're one mm -hmm. of our suppliers. And um, so yay. Awesome. Thank you, Tanks. And uh, for, first of all, for the t-shirts and for all the great, uh, great product. work and products they're bringing up. Yeah. yeah. One, of the, one of the cool things about what we do is we source local products. So we source local soil. So our soil comes from tanks, green stuff. Uh, if you need bulk soil or bulk woody mulch, uh, um, Arizona Worm Farm at 19th Avenue and uh, and Southern has bulk action for you if you want to go there. Um, you know, people might go, well, Greg, why are you sending them elsewhere? Well, the truth of the matter is on our bag products, we don't make a lot of money and they're really heavy. So, uh, and it makes more sense if you're going to buy this stuff in bulk or buy lots of it, buy it in bulk from Arizona Worm Farm. They're, uh, they're great. Uh, then we have High Creations, which we're going to talk about this evening for our foliar feed. They're out in Buckeye, and we have um, uh, Global Organics with our Bioflora fertilizer line. They're out in Buckeye. Mm -hmm. We get, you know, we get a lot of our stuff locally. The citrus comes from Yuma. Uh, unfortunately, there are no uh, deciduous fruit growers in the state, so our deciduous fruit comes from Dave Wilson in. Um, the unfortunately part of that ended at the at the part that they don't grow in the state. We are very fortunate to have a great relationship with Dave Wilson Nursery yes. in California. They yeah. are amazing. Yeah, they're very they're supportive. In, yeah, good product. They're, they're in Northern California. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to start by showing you our new user portal. Our updated. Our, our new updated user portal. <laughs> so can you... Uh, Bring that one and share your screen Let's on that see one. See if it works for me. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Look at that. This awesome. is if you go to urban farm, the urban farm .net, you will go get a page like this. This login is accessible to anybody who has purchased something from the fruit tree program. And you can just log in. Ah. Check that out. I don't have the right one. Forgot password. I'm going to do that. Uh, work. You do that. And uh, so what we have here in depth is a massive amount of information. So I would just really encourage you to take it a little bit at a time. There is uh, an amazing, amazing amount of uh, information, pl tree planting videos. All of our classes are uploaded. This one will be uploaded there. And uh, my fruit tree manifesto uh, is there. So that's a printed PD, a printable PDF document of everything that we talk about. And so one of the things that we wanted to start with tonight was what actually goes in the hole. So when you plant your fruit tree, we're going to have you dig a hole 24 inches by 24 inches. So two feet by two feet and a foot deep and save 40% of that dirt out of the hole and put it in a wheelbarrow. And then add, uh, if you're using our bag stuff, Farmer Greg's planting mix, you're gonna add that in 60% by volume into the wheelbarrow. And you're gonna add 
mycorrhiza, which is fungal life. You're going to add azomite, which is a vitamin pill boost for your trees and worm castings, which is some of both of the, both the fungal growth and, um, and uh, the nutrients. And you're going to mix all of that up in the whole, in the wheelbarrow, and then you're going to plant your tree. And with the heat that we've had the past couple of years, um, and I don't think it's going to get any better anytime soon. With the heat that we've had the past couple of years, we have been suggesting that you add two portions of the tree planting kit, not one. One portion is one pound of azomite, one pound of worm castings, and one ounce of mycorrhiza. We're highly suggesting for the extreme fruit tree care that you use two portions. So it would be two pounds, two pounds, and two ounces. So in all summary, what we're saying is 40% from the whole, 60% from the um, Greg's planting mix, or maybe another um, quality um, addition in there, and then a two pounds of worm casting, two pounds of azomite, and two ounces of mycorrhiza. And then finally, you dig a one cup. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. I was going to the basin. So recently, uh, from Scott Murray, he's our uh, can they cop. see my screen? Uh, we can. We're waiting for uh, you to log in. He's oh, I did log in. Oh, interesting. Unshare your screen because we're seeing the login screen at this point. Hmm. Well, that's why you were kept talking because you didn't realize you had the way. Yeah, exactly. So um, he is our uh, he is our coffee and avocado expert from San Diego, and he is also an extreme tree care person. And he says put a pound of organic. organic fertilizer in the bottom of the hole, which right. we've never told you to do. We didn't want to burn the roots. But, you know, as it turns out, it's highly unlikely that organic fertilizer is going to burn the roots of your trees. So, all right. What do we got here, Miss Janice? This, once you log in, I had to reset my password because I haven't gone in this direction in a while. But once you log in and you click over here on the left, the Urban Farm Fruit Tree Member page, you get our new Fruit Tree Member page. And this is the updated data and resources for anybody who's uh, purchased a fruit tree or supplies from us. So we've got um, seven different areas. We've got updated planting recommendations, which we just went through. And oddly enough, while Greg was going through it, I was pointing at it on my screen, but nobody could see. <laughs> Um, then we've got the best planting season, information about when you want to plant your trees and why. Um, and then we've got our recordings from these classes. So the five classes that we have right now, well, this one will be going right here tonight, um, will be happening there. And then we've got the presentations from our virtual kickoff, including Tom Spellman's presentation. Go watch that. Go watch that. It was an amazing Absolutely. presentation. Multiple times you need to watch that. Um, Anthony's uh, presentation on the um, foliar information. Uh, and then we've got some of our amazing local fruit tree success stories are here, which that's a fun one right there. Uh, a little plug of my own. These are my stories that I wrote. Oh, and, good. Hold yeah. on. Let's, let's go back to that. Because the important piece of this is Janice ended up with a caliche backyard. Oh my gosh. And when she filled her hole, so when you dig your hole, I want you to make sure that you stick a hose in it and see how quickly or slowly it drains. And she had water in her house, in her house, sorry, in her <laughs> holes 48 hours after. No, longer? Wow. Four, Four days. days. And I was, oh by that God. point I was I was bucketing it out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you have a caliche issue, go read her stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah. Hi, Clay. Hi, caliche. This is a good story. Yeah. Um, and I had fun telling it. And then we've got, um, we brought in a couple of the presentations from the Victory Gardens Challenge classes. Um, this one is from uh, Kristen Parsons. Oh, um, yeah. And this one was uh, you and I talking about summer orchard care, which is a lot all, you know what, one thing you're going to find is there's a lot of consistency to our story going from one class to the next. And then some yeah. PDF documents that you can download and some archives of some other videos, planting in the grass, planting in gravel, planting an apple tree, 
and some old stuff. So this is important because everything that we're talking about in all these classes are going to be accessible to you ongoing. Uh, ongoing and forever, as long as I'm breathing. Actually, well, I should say, I should say these days, as long as Jan Janice is breathing, because. Uh, <laughs> well, as long as, as long as you as our customers, as long as part of our fruit tree program member, um, as long as you are still part of our program and still in our database, then yeah, you have access to it. So very cool. All right. So shall we jump into the supply part of this thing? Well, we do. Oh, have. all right. Good. Look at you. Let's start with the. Uh, um, let's go ahead and start with the uh, tree planting kit. Over here in the soil mulch and amendments, we have the single portion starter amendments, which has the um, single portion of um, mycorrhiza, worm castings, and azomite. Mm -hmm. And what we recommend is two of these per tree. You can find that here. And if you have more than two trees, then this multi portion amendment bundle is going to be the best buck purchasing, but um, best buck being for your buck. Yeah. Yes, that's there. And again, that's azomite, mycorrhiza, and worm castings. Um, maybe next year we'll bundle them two pounds, two pounds, and two ounces, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. To start moving so up. The, the reason, so we talk about this in our extreme fruit tree care class, uh, but the reason that we're having to go extreme is because of the heat. You know, we had 53 days of 110. We had 144 days of over 100. It's just when you're driving around town, I encourage you to look around to see the trees that didn't make it. Yeah. It's, uh, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to put together systems for you uh, that hopefully will make your um, fruit trees bulletproof. It's going to take some extra effort on your part. Well, you know, the goal here is to help our customers succeed. Mm -hmm. That's all we do. Everything yeah. we do is to try and help everyone else succeed. So the worm castings do come from Arizona Worm Farm. Uh, so that's also, I forgot when we were talking about our local stuff, that's uh, local worm castings. The first year we bought worm castings, they had to come out of California. And then Zach called me up and he says, Greg, I got worm castings. It's like, dude, you rock. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's these three items here are part of these two items here. So the mycorrhiza, the azomite, and the worm castings are part of the planting starter kits. Yes. Yeah. Why don't you click on, uh, yeah, perfect. This is if the you... Farmer Greg's planting mix. Yes, Janice? No, go ahead. This is the Farmer Greg's planting mix. Uh, this is something that our friend Emily Rocky down at Tanks Green Stuff did for us a few years ago. It is a mixture of 40% compost, 40% composted pine bark, 10% um, cocoa peat, which is uh, cocoa core or co uh, cocoa husks that have been um, shredded, and 10% perlite. And um, yeah, it's a really good product for this. Um, one of the, let me tell a quick story. Uh, in 2003 and 2004, I started a started Urban Farm Nursery as a local nursery, and we were we were growing four inch organic plant starts, and at one point we had 80,000 of them growing, uh, and the gentleman and I, Christian and my uh, longtime friend Christian and I, we mostly him, we did research on soils and he was doing these soil trials for like two months to see what would work best and the big takeaway that we got from these soil trials was two parts number one you get what you pay for and number two local and the local part and local in the desert southwest the local part is all about the kind of microbes that are growing in the compost. So when you're buying local compost, you're getting the microbes that are appropriate for 
the desert Southwest if you're buying them local. So, um, and the, what's the coolest thing about our bag products, Janice? Uh -huh. Well, we've been doing it for a while. We do a buy three, get one free. And it's really easy to choose with one or the other. You choose a single bag by clicking here, or if you want the buy three, get one free, you click there and it automatically gives you the bundled four bag option for the price of three. Nice. And uh, Bonnie says, how many trees can be planted with a multi-portion planting kit? Well, if you're going with a single portion per tree, that's one pound, one pound and one ounce, that'll do five trees. But we're recommending two and two, so you have about two and a half yeah. per um, multi-portion bundle. And I, and I promise you, we're not trying to sell you more stuff. What we're trying to do is we're trying to set you up for success. Yeah. All right. What's next, Ms. Janice? Well, we have our tree well top mulch and our ah. compost, both oh, of which yeah. have the same four bag bundle option. Yep. So the, the compost is the tanks compost and this tree well top mulch, again, it comes from tank. So it's a local, uh, local Tucson company. And um, we highly, highly suggest, well, actually this is a rule. So in my tree classes in education, there are guidelines and there are rules. So one of the guidelines is you keep your trees small so they're easier to prune and easier to pick. One of the rules is my six, six rule, six inches of woody mulch, six foot diameter basin around your tree because what that does is it immediately starts building healthy soil underneath the canopy of your tree. So this is, uh, this is our bagged top mulch. Um, again, like I said earlier, you can also get bagged top mulch at, or not bagged, you can get it in bulk from Arizona Worm Farm or there's a company out there called chipdrop.com. And at chipdrop, they will coordinate with you and a tree service in the area to drop a load of woody mulch in your driveway. But however, caveat, alarms going off. <laughs> That's you. If, if you get a load from chip drop, you have to know, I want you to, I'm, I'm getting close to the screen because I want you to make sure that you listen to me. You will be getting up to 30 cubic yards of woody mulch. It's usually between 20 and 30 cubic yards. That is a pile eight feet wide, six feet tall, and about 20 feet long. Just saying. <coughs> if you go with chip drop, there is a lot that you're going to get. So there's your three options for woody mulch. Um, and uh, Arizona Worm Farm will do it in bulk um, and deliver it to you. So uh, Jewel says, it's a huge pile that you can't... Sh that you can't shovel in a day, a week or a month. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Michelle says the chip drop load was larger than her minivan. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So just know that. Um, and there are absolute places for that. I did a uh, garden consult with somebody a while back and they had um, a half acre in their backyard that was all dirt. It was just, you know, bladed straight dirt. Um, and I told them to put six, six inches to a foot of woody mulch in their backyard. And um, they did it. And it, I think it took four or five of like a hundred cubic yards. And how many, how many truckloads did you put in your backyard, Janice? I put two and then I brought in some bag stuff too. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But I am really glad that I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. with, the, with the woody mulch, again, what you're doing is you're mimicking nature. You are mimicking nature just like it would happen in a forest. So add lots and lots and lots and lots of woody mulch. I'm going to be on uh, Rosie on the House on Saturday, and I'm quite sure we're going to be talking about the woody mulch. And I will probably go on a rant proselytizing about how much <laughs> woody mulch, how much organic matter we need to add. Because our desert soils have less than 1% organic matter. Good luck trying to grow anything in them. So lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of woody mulch around your trees and in your uh, around your gardens. It never goes in a garden. It goes uh, on the oh. pathways and on dirt areas to keep down dust and start growing healthy soil. Oh, I can swear to you, when I first got into our house, it was a completely bare backyard, as was everybody else's in the mm -hmm. in the yard. And then when I brought in that mulch, there was an an immediate, marked 
result in the lack of dust coming into my house. Yeah. My house changed and I was on my group of, of Facebook friends in the neighborhood. They were all talking about how dusty their houses were. I'm like, mine's not. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, if there, if you have clay soil, the answer is organic material. Mm -hmm. If you have sandy soil and the water's going through too fast. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me guess. Organic matter? Organic matter, <laughs> you know? And, you know, but even if you have great soil that's as beautiful as Greg's soil, because it's an old orchard, mm -hmm. you still need the organic material to keep yep. up that bioorganic yeah. life. It's amazing how quickly this desert heat... Um, challenges our soil. Challenges our soil. It'll, it eats up the it eats up the woody mulch. So yes. I, we get this question a lot. Um, somebody up, uh, what about bugs? Um, somebody wants to know about termites. So the thing about termites is you either have them or you're going to have them. Uh, the thing about bugs is they're here uh, adding woody mulch. Um, you know, if you're, con if you're concerned about bugs, you know, don't put it close to your house. Um, but it doesn't, attract them because they're already here they are so they are um kathy, kathy says should the irrigation go under the mulch i would always put the irrigation over the mulch you put the irrigation over the mulch so that irrigates through the mulch keeps the mulch moist it breaks down faster that way it keeps it moist it keeps it cool it creates an organism life but you know nutrient sustaining area for everything yeah yeah how many bags of mulch to fill your recommended tree size? Start with four bags per uh, per basin, and um, minimum minimum four bags per basin, and then start uh, start from there. Here's and what say, I tell. Go ahead. I would say that because we we if you do the math, it's a lot more than four bags. Mm -hmm. But if you do four bags, you're getting a really good start. Yeah. And here's what I tell people. If you spend $58 on a citrus tree with us, the first year you're going to spend $58 on soil, supplements, um, all the stuff that you need to make that tree thrive. Otherwise, you put that poor tree in the ground and it dies six months later because it's too hot, it's too, not, too dry, it's too wet. Um, all of these things are, uh, are things that will kill your trees. So. Yeah. Shall we jump into fertilizer next, Janice? Absolutely. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go to another spot. Okay. Up here under the general store, let's go to granular fertilizers. Mm, okay, cool. So I mentioned them already. Um, we have two organic fertilizers. Again, both of them are locally made. Um, we have the Tanks Super Mix. And it is uh, 10 pounds for $20. So if you need a small amount, that's the way to go. Uh, and it is organic. And then for uh, people with a lot of more than more than 10 pounds worth of fertilizer that is needed, we have our Bioflora fertilizer. Uh, these guys, Bioflora is Global Organics. They're out in uh, Buckeye. And this is 50 pounds for $50. And for organic fertilizer, that is a screaming deal. Why, Janice, do we want to have organic fertilizer? Well, if you look at any bag of fertilizer, you've got NPK numbers. You've got mm -hmm. your nitrogen, you've got your phosphorus, you got your potassium. And if you have inorganic material, inorganic fertilizer, it's going to be really high in the salts and your potassium, I'm sorry, your nitrogen is going to be really high. It's going to be an indicator that it's not um, mm -hmm. organic. But those salts can burn your roots of your tree yep. or your plants of any kind. Well, and so plus they're petrochemical products, so they're, they're harsher on the soil. Um, there's five components of healthy soil, dirt, airspace, water, organic matter, and everything that's alive in the soil. And our job is to add organic matter and nurture the everything that's alive in the soil. And when you're using the harsher non-organic fertilizers, it, neg it can negatively impact the life in the soil. So organic fertilizers, uh, the, the nice thing and the reason that we can sell the bioflora the way we do is because literally in the past four weeks, three weeks, we have bought... Um, four tons of it in bags. So basically we're getting it at a farmer 
price uh, that we're passing on to you. Uh, these uh, bioflora fertilizers is, pr is primarily bagged for, uh, for farmers. Uh -huh. So. So that's our things. And you know, it's about two and a half cups per inch of trunk diameter is what mm -hmm. you're going to need four times a year. And we've got it written on the side here, Valentine's Day, Tax Day, Memorial Day, and Labor Day. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. You don't have to do it exactly that day, but it's a good um, yeah. reminder. Basically, it's every two months, February, April, June, and August. That's yeah, what we suggest. End of May, June. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, dang. I had a good question that I was going to pitch to you. It'll come back to me. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. So um, unbeknownst to me, a few months ago, Janice starts putting together harvest calendars for the different fruits, which is cool in itself. However, on the back of the harvest calendars, are you bringing them up? On the back of the harvest calendars is a supplement list. It's what you need to fertilize and when, because the first, what's Keep that? On. The, oh yeah, perfect. Um, the back side shows your nutrition schedule. And this is so incredible. This makes it super simple. So thank you, Janice, for this. Um, the, you see on their essence, soul, noble gills, and heart, those are our foliar fertilizers, which we're going to talk about next. And there is a really good educational video from Anthony at High Creations in your uh, on your member page, um, talking about why the whys and what's of foliar fertilizing right there. Uh, so um, what foliar fertilizing is gonna do, and while I talk about this, maybe let's jump over to the uh, foliar fertilizer on the cart. Um, the, what this is gonna do is this is going to enliven, it's gonna strengthen, it's gonna add, uh, vitality to your trees in a way that they have never had before. And so a few years ago, I, you know, I had a great, uh, great harvest here. And that was before it got really hot. So before the heat a couple of years ago, just doing normal fertilizing on my grapes did them just fine. And what I have found is that they absolutely, if you want grapes and grape leaves, and want to avoid um, skeletonizers, you have to have to foliar feed. And you foliar feed during the different months of the year, including the winter when the leaves aren't on there because it takes this foliar feed into the trunk of the tree uh, through the branches. And it, it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Here we are in the fall, which is where we're at right now. Yep. We're doing, still doing the essence and the soul. We should do the granular in September. And then we come back up here. We're gonna continue it, avoid freezing temperatures, apply to the tops and bottoms of leaves, but you also are gonna go on the, on the trunks themselves. Yeah. So I had an interesting thing happen. Zach lives in my neighborhood from Arizona Worm Farms. Um, and I talk about him a lot because I love the work that they're doing over there. Uh, Zach was in my neighborhood dropping off some worm castings and um, he texted me after he left and he says, oh my gosh, Greg, your yard looks so incredible. And this was in August when it was so dang hot. And um, I can correlate that back to a little bit of foliar feeding that I had started doing this summer. And uh, th they actually have a compost tea program at uh, Arizona Worm Farm. Uh, that you can for, I, I don't know how much it costs, but um, uh, you can have them come by and they will spray your entire yard with uh, compost tea. So um, I had them do that, uh, I think back in June or July here. And I, like I said, I can't remember what we uh, paid for that, but it is well, well worth it if you have a lot of plants. Like I have about 80 fruit trees here on the property that you know needed that nutrient boost. So, um, so here they are, it's the heart. The noble gills, the soul, and the essence, they do four different things. Um, the cool thing is in uh, Janice's infamous wisdom, she says, Greg, how about if we give, 
If they buy three, we'll give them one for free. So <laughs> if you buy Noble Gill's Soul and Essence, you get the heart for free. So thank you, Janice. Well, you know, we have this theme going of buy three, get mm -hmm. one free, and it just made a lot of sense for that. And then um, the other cool thing is, uh, uh, it's the second item there, it's the sprayer modification kit. One of the big pains in the butt is um, getting the pump up sprayers. So actually go back one and let's, let's look at the pump up sprayer real quick. We do carry these occasionally. We don't ever bring in nearly enough. Um, so big box store or Ace Hardware or something, get one of those. And that handle there, so go up a little bit. Oh, there we go. That handle there, that just spews out just the teeniest amount of spray. And it could easily take you an hour to go through a container of this on your fruit trees. And who has time for that in our culture? So, all right, back um, to this. Our buddy, Glenn. Glenn is a rock star. He is amazing. He come, came up with this idea. Uh, actually, play the video, would you? Um, if we don't hear it, um, I can uh, talk, talk it through. Um, so you take your... All right, so we're not going to hear it. So you take your pump-up sprayer like that, and um, you take the end off. So that is the sprayer modification kit. We sell them for $7.50. You take the end off of the sprayer and replace the wand with the sprayer modification kit. Sorry about the shaking, guys. That is my lime in action. I have, unfortunately, I have lime. And uh, I just shake all the time. I'm not nervous, right, Janice? I'm never nervous yeah. in front of the camera. <laughs> so slide it on like that. And um, Ta-da! Yeah, there you go, just like that. Um, and that, I so once I did that, it made foliar feeding a whole lot easier. I can go through two, I have a two gallon sprayer and I can go through two gallons in about seven to 10 minutes and I can cover a third of my trees in my front yard. So in less than an hour, I can get all of the trees done foliar fed here. So you're taking two gallons mm -hmm. and you're covering a third of your 70 plus trees. No, a third of my front yard, 40 trees. Got, see, a third of yeah. the 40 trees. So what, 12 yeah. trees? Yeah, sure, 12, 24, 36, maybe 15 trees. 12, front. 15 trees with two gallons. Yeah. Twelve to 15 full-size happy trees, Right. you'll get a lot farther with your new trees. Exactly. So get yourself one of those um, and, uh, and the foliars. Uh, do, you, do we need to say anything else about the foliar feeding, Janice? I don't think so. Does anybody have any questions on that? Yeah. Pop the questions so. in the Q&A. What else do we need to talk about tonight, Janice? What are we missing? Uh, oh, watering devices, yes. Now, um, oops, I got to change one thing while we're looking there. The moisture meter, why don't you talk about that one or do you want me to? Okay, so so there's. I'll let you talk about the soil probe. The moisture meter goes down about eight or 10 inches. And this is going to indicate to you whether the soil is dry or approaching dry. And it's going to give you a clue as to when to water. Uh, I get this question a lot. How much and how often do I water? I can answer the how often sort of, but you have to pay attention to the tree. And I have a whole watering methodology that unfortunately, I think this year it has to change. I've said for years, once a month in the winter, twice a month in the summer, I think especially from, uh, it'll be once a month in the winter, twice a month in the summer, the spring and fall, and during the heat of the summer, so this would be June, July, August, and September, we're gonna have to water twice a month. Um, and this will give you an indication of how dry it is. Uh, then there is the soil probe. And the soil probe is a three foot long stake. Um, I know that's in here somewhere. Um, that's a three foot long metal stake. And how they work is. Well, you know, with the soil, with a moisture meter, you're going to put that down just a few inches in the top and you do not leave it in the soil. The soil probe is the tool that you use to go down in to the soil to see how far down the water's getting. Um, I highly recommend you take our extreme care class to learn more about actually using them. 
but the two of these tell you slightly different things. Mm -hmm. The soil probe tells you how far down the water got. This moisture meter tells you how much moisture is in that top few inches of soil. There you go. And it's really easy. You just put it on the ground and you get a little lean on it. You don't have to push hard. Just put a little lean, a little body pressure on it. And that tip right there will go straight through moist soil. Mm -hmm. And the good news about this is it's locally made. We have a local metal worker yeah. that makes them for us. So oh, we've got a theme going there with the local. We do. I am a huge proponent of local. Right. All right. So let's, let's talk. Yeah, uh, we went both went in the same place. Let's talk about the chlorine filter. Um, so chlorine is put in our water to kill things. So if you think about it, five components of healthy soil. I am. Uh, I talk about this in, a lot. Just get over it <laughs> if you get tired of hearing it, because I want you all to be able to teach it. So the five components of healthy soil, dirt, air, space, water, organic matter, and everything that's alive in the soil. And we put chlorine in the water to kill things. So if that we're using that water to water our garden, it can negatively impact the health of our soil. So take the chlorine out. The best thing to do is to put in a whole house watering or whole house chlorination system. Um, I have one in my front yard that is um, pretty simple and it was uh, less than $150 installed and it takes the chlorine out. It's just a carbon-based filter like you would see on a pool. Um, and, uh, or you can use this. And this is a chlorine filter that it was built for your shower head. Uh, because the other thing you shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be, first of all, drinking chlorinated water. Secondly, you shouldn't be showering in chlorinated water. It's, it, it's a... Uh, a uh, chemical that can dry your skin and uh, get absorbed through your skin and negatively impact your health. So this chlorine filter uh, it lasts about a year. This is the shower ready. No, this is, uh, where's the shower ready version? There's, there's the shower ready version. Uh, and it just goes on your shower head. So we have those available. Uh, this is the, um, actually go back one. Uh, this shower ready one also can be put in line on your drip systems if you want to. Uh, so just know that. And then this one is the ready for the spigot. So you just uh, attach it to your spigot and hose and you're good to go. And then once a year, you replace the chlorine filter and just, um, you know, make yourself a note in your smartphone these days to say, change out your chlorine filter on such and such date uh, and you're good to go. Now, this is not something that is critical, crucial for your fruit trees, because your fruit trees and your soil will do a lot of the filtration for you. It's mm. really important for your vegetables. Really important for your vegetables. And I say it is really, it's crucial for your fruit trees. And really better yet, put a whole house system on. You need to take the chlorine out. Um, be, be wary though, this is not a water softening system. Water softening systems use salt. They add salt to your water to soften it. So if you're doing that, then you're adding salt. And so a real quick story, about six, seven years ago, um, my friend Jan called me and said, hey, I want a garden in my yard. And this was back when I was doing garden installations. And so I, I did a quick garden. In fact, it's my, one of my first YouTube videos on my channel, Jan's Instant Garden. And Not Janice. Jan. Right, Jan's, J-A-N-S, J-A-N apostrophe S. Um, I went and installed her garden one, the same day as I installed my brother's and hers thrived and my brother's died. And it took us about six months, but we figured out that my brother was using soft water on his garden. Softened water can negatively impact your soil because it's adding salts to it. So just be, just be wary of that. It's not good for your house plants. It's not good for your vegetables. It's not good for your trees. Yeah. Jewel says, hold on. Jewel says, uh, while well, you figure out what we're going to talk about next, uh, maybe drip circles. Um, Jewel says, Greg, go over the watering schedule again, because you said twice a month for the summer. I think you meant three times. So what I, uh, we're in the process of reconfiguring the watering schedule. What I've always said is once a month in the winter, twice a month in the summer. 
And that I did that because of the flood irrigation at my property, but both when I was a kid in the 70s and now, and flood water, flood irrigation water on a flood irrigated property comes once a month in the winter, twice a month in the summer and works just fine. So I just modeled that when I put together my, uh, my strategy, watering strategy of watering once a month in the winter and twice a month in the summer. That being said, I think what we're gonna do uh, and I'm going to really suggest during the hottest part of the summer, we're going to water once a week. So June, July, August, and September, your trees are going to need water once a week. So that's, I hope that adds clarity. And I'm, Jewel, I'm still in the process of kind of navigating my way through what that's going to look like, but we're going to have to do something because we had a lot of trees die this year. And I think it was because of the heat. All over the valley, you see them dying. Yeah, all over the valley. So the drip circle, this is, uh, this is one of the- wait, 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 wait. Go, go, go ahead. On, on the topic of watering, Greg has the irrigation that comes in and it floods his property. That is a different method of water application than anybody who has a drip line mm -hmm. or that is using a hose or a soaker hose or the other, you know, even a bubbler, it's different. If you are on anything less than flood irrigation with those hundreds of gallons of water at one time, you definitely need to watch what is happening to your trees and monitor the soil and get mm -hmm. the, the frequency that's going to work best for your trees. Yeah. Because Which, you are probably going to be switching to once a week based on that system. I know I did this summer. Yeah. So this is a drip circle. The drip circle is a replacement for your drip emitter. And what we see, what we make them with 18 half gallon per hour drip emitters in them. So what just kills me is when they put a tree on a mound with one drip emitter right next to the trunk and expect that it's gonna thrive. It's not gonna work. First of all, you need your six, six rule, six foot diameter basin, six inches of woody mulch. And you have to flood that and deep water it. The reason we see trees falling over in storms in the summertime is because they're not being deep watered. So what this does is this helps you deep water your trees. And what this looks like is uh, it's got 18 half gallon per hour emitters on it. And you see that little it, hole right there? Yep, that little hole there. And it's this is two circles. Um, what we want you to do is spread it out in the entire basin and hook it to your drip system. This will give your tree uh, nine gallons per hour and it'll distribute the water evenly through the basin. And this is again, one of the things that Scott Murray from San Diego um, encouraged us to do, so. Yes. Now, if you are, um, if you've taken our extreme care class, we talk about the canopy of the tree. And what you need to think about is as the canopy of the tree expands, the roots underneath the soil are expanding about the same rate. And the best absorbing element parts of the roots are the tips. So as those roots go out, I've got my heads up, hands up higher. As those roots go out into the soil, those tips of the roots are what are bringing in the water and bringing in the nutrients. So when, if you have any kind of watering system that's watering at the trunk, you're mm -hmm. not giving your, your tree the healthiest place for the water. You need to make it out into the basin at close to the drip line or the canopy edge of your tree to be able to effectively give your tree the water that it needs. Yeah. And this will this will help do it. Yeah. So. And just for clarification, this is also listed in our section on irrigation supplies. You can find it here, but the drip circle is not part of the drip tape system. Right. They just happen to be making drips. Yeah, drip drip tape is for your gardens and we go over that in a, in a, in a class. It's different class. Different class. All right, well, have we covered everything, Ms. Janice? Well, you know, I would like to talk for a moment around the harvest calendars. Um, mm -hmm. These are brand new and they are updated this year. We've done some research and some clarification and some uh, sucking in all the information we can get from different resources that we have access to. Mm -hmm. And we've created these calendars like this one and you, can, you can't see it. It lists the different trees 
and it shows if it's a deciduous tree what the chill hours are, and you can see the approximate time to expect the fruit to be ripening. And this is just nice. a resource to help you plan. Now, we've seen calendars out there that have a lot of different trees on them, but those aren't the basic trees that are the best for our area here in Phoenix and the greater Phoenix area. These lists are the trees that are going to be the best trees for the greater Phoenix area. We made Bada it boom. just for us. Yeah. Yay. So well, it's a great and, and let's, cheat sheet too. Let's say that, that we made it just for the low desert. Um, we actually have people that drive in from Palm Desert to get supplies and uh, plants from us and take education. So uh, the Palm Desert, Palm Springs area, uh, and the low desert here. Yeah. So this is a great calendar for this area. Um, even though we do have supplies that we can ship out of state and we could ship this one, but it won't be of any use to you unless you are going to be in the low desert. Exactly. Dale wants to know, is the watering schedule the same for new and established trees? Yes, it is. Except Dale also, go ahead. A brand new tree probably needs a second dose before you get to the, um, you need to water it well, and then you need to water it again before you get Ooh, into yeah. your watering cycle. Yeah, I can get that, but just twice. Yes. Um, Dale also wants to know, can soils, mulch, and amendments be picked up this weekend? Yes, with one caveat. Our weekends are Friday and Saturday. So know that we are not open on Sunday. Greg and Janice need a day off. Otherwise, we do we'd... work six days a week. We need that Sunday off. I was going to say eight days a week. <laughs> but, uh... All right. So that's us. We um, we got other things out there that can help and be assist you in other ways. But one of the best things that we have to offer you is us. Our education and us. Yep. We're exactly. here. We want to help you succeed in doing what you're doing. We want you to be able to grow healthy, happy trees. Um, Bonnie wants to know uh, fruit tree pickup dates in January. Um, here's how it normally works. Uh, we get our deciduous trees arriving the first week of January. They come in unpruned. So we have to spend a significant amount of time, usually takes about six or seven days of uh, getting the trees ready for you to pick them up. So we prune them and you know talk, take out off any, any dead broken branches and get them ready uh, for you. So that's See, usually through about the 12th or 14th. Um, and then so the we, go ahead, Janice. Weekend, the second weekend of January sometimes is when we start. Yeah, well, it depends. The last couple of years that hasn't been the case because because it, yeah, it's usually the second or third weekend of January. Um, and See, what we have to do is we have to wait for our grower, Dave Wilson, to mm -hmm. hit the right target for them to start digging up the trees and bringing them to us. And so they probably don't even start until after Christmas, and then they need to get all several hundred trees that we order and make sure that they're all categorized and wrapped up uh -huh. and labeled several for hundred? us. And several hundred. Several thousand, you mean. For us, we don't order it. Have you heard of that Oh, many? yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes. So um, yeah, no, so they'll come in to us the first week of January and we'll get them ready. And as soon as we know, uh, usually we can say so by about the third week of December, they'll let us know when our load's coming in and um, then we'll know. Uh, I, I, do, I do want this year, uh, in past years, we've just been open on uh, Friday and Saturday. I think I want to open on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for a couple weeks in a row to, in January. So it'll be the second half of January and maybe the first weekend of February. But we really need to get you down, get your trees picked up, and uh, get us on our way for our other projects. I want to talk about two more things before we lock, lock it up here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, pest control area is where you can find the tree wrap. No, I guess not. Maybe not. Hold on before you go. The BT right there on the right. Let's talk a little bit about BT, Bacillus thuringiensis. It is a product that is a naturally occurring product. It's a bacteria that takes caterpillars out. This is what you add to your foliar feed when you're foliar feeding your grapes. 
excuse me, when you're foliar feeding your grapes. Um, and you just put an ounce in a gallon. And uh, what I would do is every time I go to foliar feed my grapes, I would put this on them throughout the entire season. I um, did use that on my grapes um, a couple, three times. And, um, but I was doing the regular foliar feeding without it. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, my treat, my grape vines are like the envy of the neighborhood oh, no, right you now. Said that. Yeah. While you're, while you're shifting to the next one, Kathy wants to know when fertilizing an established tree, do you spread it over or under the mulch? It's best to put it under the mulch. Uh, so scrape back the mulch, put the, foli the, put the fertilizer down uh, and then cover it back up. Here's the thing. If you have a dog, your dog is going to love to roll in this, to eat it. So you need to um, keep your dog away. One of the things that I'll do is I'll take a shovel and I'll stick it down six or eight inches and put a wedge in pour it in the wedge, cover it back up. That also helps. Right. And then you, then you water. And then you water it in. Exactly. And you water in. Now this class is going to be up for people to listen to um, forever now. And yep. we want you to know that for January pickup, for January trees, you're getting pretty much everything that we're talking about here is going to apply for those trees as well. You mean the watering and fertilizing and the watering, the yep. fertilizing, the, the nutrients. Um, yeah, all the tools, all of this is apply. So if at any point in this class right now, we talk about the fall information, it applies for January as well. Yeah. Jewel says that she did water. Uh, let's see here. She did water her Anna apple a little more than twice a month. Um, and versus the established trees and the plums seem fine. So here's what we're finding, Jewel, and everybody else out there. Um, there were a lot of apple trees that died this year and during the heat. And so I think we're going to have to, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to go to watering once a week. Yeah. And if you are um, shading your trees, which is important and it's going to affect your tree, um, mm -hmm. we'll talk about it in another class. Make sure that your shade does not touch the tree. That will effectively transfer the heat right to the tree. Oh yeah. So a few years ago I did a, uh, I did a tent over one of my trees in my front yard and it acted like with shade cloth, you would think it would breathe. It didn't breathe. It cooked the tree. Yeah. So be careful of that. If you're going to shade a tree with shade cloth, you want to shade it uh, way away from the tree or just the top and the West side. Right. Um, this is tree wrap. This is important for your citrus trees for sure, but also very beneficial for your other trees. Mm -hmm. um, citrus trees have a very thin, thin bark and are easily sunburned. So if the trunk of your citrus trees are exposed to the sunlight, you want to protect them. You can protect them with a, a tree paint. Be careful to make sure that you are getting one that's appropriate for trees. You don't want to get anything that has bad chemicals in it. Um, uh, but there's also tree wrap. This will last for a couple of years on a tree, mm -hmm. depending on how much sunlight it's getting. One roll will cover um, probably about four to five trees. Cool. So this is and important. We have a little bit different because our supplier ran out of it. So we have a little, it looks a little bit different now. Yeah, same so. stuff. Actually, the new stuff is brown. It's not white, but okay. um, it's still yeah. the same stuff. Sean wants to know one more. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sean wants to know one more woody mulch question. Do fresh trimmings from chip drop need to be aged before, before applying? Nope, just use them. <laughs> and that's, the you, breakdown, that's the breaking down process. That is, the, that is the process we're after. If you are moving woody mulch that you get from a chip drop, even if they freshly cut them, by the time you get to that bottom of that pile, they are already decomposing. There is yep. already bioorganism activity happening in there. Yeah. So even if they're freshly cut, as soon as they drop that on, you've got that pile there and you start moving it, you're going to be running into it. Wear your mask. Don't want to be breathing that stuff in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were going to go do one more product. We are an, uh, almost an hour in, so I want to be done here. Oh, in the this one. Um, uh, Kathy says covering the trees in the winter for freezing temperatures is not good. It depends. Your deciduous trees need the cold, so you don't want to cover your deciduous trees. None of them. Grapes, mulberries, uh, apples, peaches, apricots, plums, d d uh, quinces, you don't cover any of them. Um, the citrus, on the other hand, uh, 
I have never had, and I'm right here in the central city at near 16th street and Bethany home road. I've never had frost or freeze damage on a citrus tree. And I've been growing them for 20 plus years here. So uh, if it looks like it's going to get really cold, I don't suspect it is this year. We have a La Nina year in 2020, which means warmer and drier. I don't think it's going to be a problem. But if, if it looks like we're going to go to hard freeze, uh, throwing some uh, frost cloth over the tree might be a good idea for, for the first year trees. Once they're established, that's just no problem. We well, also got to think about your microclimate. If you live in an area that gets really windy, you've got a lot of um, flow of air, you know, a lot of desert act, act, mm -hmm. um, flow, your, your cold is going to come in and get in faster and low, uh, lower temperatures than it does at Greg's house. Greg's microclimate, because of all the life, because of all the trees, because of the great soil, his microclimate does not get as cold in his area as it would up by my house. But by my house, because just the house over from mine, I'm open, open desert. Um, other places up in Scottsdale, you got the cold coming down the mountain that'll come right and snap in through those homes. You might be more cautious about freezing. Um, yeah. Just be careful. Just pay attention to that, yeah. yeah. All right, one more product and then we're gonna- Oh, I was gonna talk about, about the garden consultations. Um, we oh. do have people who have asked for them and have um, signed up for them. Uh, Greg needs to review his calendar to find some more slots right now, but this is something that happens um, on a regular basis where we set up a, uh, you click it on here, you add it to your cart. Um, the information will be sent separately in another email on how to actually sign up for it. Um, we are working with setting up alternate phone consultation. So it's not just Greg we're expanding our calendar. Um, we're not there yet, but we will be there soon. All right. Well, I've been, we've been answering the questions as you've been flipping through yeah. the, the uh, pages on our website. I've been answering the questions. Oh my gosh. Chris from Manila is on the line. No way. Hi, we, Chris. We got to meet her at our, uh, uh, Victory Garden Challenge classes, the 65 classes or so that we gave in March, April, and May of this year. So it is always great to see you online. Hey, Chris, we've got, um, Jewel says hi. Uh, <laughs> Chris, we have got our Global Seed Summit that launched yesterday, globalseedsummit.com uh, coming up at the end of November. So make sure you- uh, The promotion launch or the- the publication about the event launched yeah, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. The announcement um, about it being happening. Yeah, Chris says, as you know, the weather is opposite of yours. It's been raining for weeks and my bunnies ate nibbled uh, the one of the trees bark skin around the tree. Um, other trees already protected by screen cloth. I have another one. Is there a way to heal the tree that's well? So she wants to know if there's a way that given the bunnies chewed off the bark, is there a way to heal the tree? Um, you could, it, it depends on how much damage they did. If it's a little bit, it'll self heal. If it's a little bit more, uh, you might use a, a nice uh, tree sealer. There's, they make tree sealers out there. Um, if and it's then, a lot, there may not be anything you can do about it. If it goes all the way around, it's probably done for. Yeah. And if there is a lot of damage to the bark, if um, you need to make sure that there's not, uh, because that opens up the tree for um, mold and mildew and other yeah. organisms, if they get in and they start, you know, creating that problem underneath the bark, that will uh, create a lot of problems. So you need to make sure that it's you know clean, don't have anything growing in there, seal it up, and then maybe find a way to protect your tree from future nibbles. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see here. Um, let's wrap it. I think uh, you got any final thoughts, Janice? Like maybe we're open this weekend. Well, for this weekend, which is October 23rd and 24th of 2020, we are open for our final citrus pickup. Um, we are doing it COVID style, which means everybody's wearing a mask. Please. Um, and, Sorry. but you know what? We did, it, it did wonderful. We did a very good uh, experience. We had a very good experience with everybody in the lot, being able to 
Let's just take it slow. And we had chairs out for everybody to wait and had nice distance. It worked. It worked. There we oh, go. You grab, you grab the camera again. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to be able to see our faces. Say hi. Ah. Hi. All right. Well, there we go. Thank you for Thank joining you us. Uh, so, and remember, our weekends are Friday, Saturday. Um, when we expand the weekends, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We are not open on Sundays. We need a day off. So. Thank you for joining us tonight. It has been uh, a pleasure to share with you and uh, know that we're here to support you in your food growing journey. Yes. And when you show up on lot, our tree crew, those wonderful, wonderful team that we have, they're there to help and we'll make sure we take care of you. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening and we will catch you on the flip side, as I like to say. Thanks Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.